Hey everybody, what's going on? It's me, Juggy Discussion here, and I am here for the third installment of our discussion videos. Today, we are going to be discussing the season three finale, The Heist. Boy oh boy, was this a meaty ass, emotional ass, motherfucking episode, guys. So, let's just jump right into it. The episode starts off with Isaac, Rebecca, and Arachnid still after the decision's made, and Isaac's basically like, there's gotta be another way. They also start ridiculing Arachnid because basically they're saying he has no soul at all if he doesn't feel any remorse for killing a little child. So Rebecca comes up with this plan to let's make her quit the game or immobilize her and make her quit the game so we won't have to kill her. I actually did not see this coming at all. It took me by surprise, and I was like, wow, this is actually a really smart move to get Solomon completely out of the picture. And what we thought was that it would work out, but eventually... Thank you all know if you're watching the spoilers ahead. Doesn't work out too well. Anyway, Isaac and Arachnid get in this huge little thing, huge little fight. And Jesse's performance here is absolutely stunning when he holds the gun up to Arachnid's head. And he's like, basic, he basically is like saying, I don't care if you see me cry because she's the only thing that's keeping me going. And these are tears of fucking compassion. And she's the only thing that I'm going to win this game to be with her. A really, really powerful scene there. And I was really, really rooting for Isaac at this point. And a Abraham slash Arachnid had nothing to say. He had nothing to say after this. So then our Isaac basically is like, you know what? We'll raid it tomorrow. I have a funeral to go to. And that funeral being Mary Two's funeral. We pick up with Isaac and Joseph walking out of the funeral home. And Isaac's, uh, what do you call it? Mary Two's friend. What's her name? Uh, Delilah. Sorry, I had, had to check out for a second. I forgot her name. Her, uh, her friend Delilah comes and sits down to Isaac, trying to basically comfort him, but it's not really working. Basically, Isaac's kind of just, in, in, in simple terms, he just, just fuck off. He just wants her to fuck off. And then she ends it with, uh, <laughs> this part was hilarious. She goes, you know what, Isaac? Go fuck yourself. And Isaac turns around and he goes, Ooh, and he gives her the, f the funniest finger I've ever seen. I was dying laughing at this point. So then we cut to a shot of Delilah and Joseph, and she's kind of like holding his hands a little too, like, she's getting a little too touchy. And you can kind of tell that this is kind of fucked up because Delilah kind of wants, you can kind of see that Delilah wants Joseph a little bit. She's kind of in, insisting that he calls her. If you, she's, she's like, if you need me for anything, call me, please call me. And Joseph's like, all right, yep, goodbye. Boom. And he leaves because Joseph wants none of it. He's already had two wives now. He's not, he's not up for any of this shit anymore. So they end up going home and we have a very, very interesting scene between Isaac and Martha, Great Aunt Martha. Basically, Isaac is accusing Great Aunt Martha of the reason why Mary's dead. He covers he covers her mouth because she goes, Joseph, Joseph, come over here. Joseph end up ends up actually listening to the conversation they have. And basically Martha says that she di she didn't kill Mary too. Mary too, she was the one that popped the painkillers. And originally Martha was playing dumb, acting like nothing really was happening. But eventually Isaac get Isaac gets the truth out of her. She says, "I didn't kill her. We talked about the baby, the cancer, and basically kind of trying to testify for herself, saying I didn't kill her. She did this on her own accord. It was her decision." Not mine. I merely talked about how to ease the, ease the pain. After that, who this scene was really, really, really strong with Joseph and Isaac. Really strong scenes in this uh, episode here. Basically, Joseph is, he, he says, Isaac, get your ass out here. He is pissed. The glasses aren't on, which means removal of innocence. It, that's when you know whenever Joseph doesn't have his glasses on, shit's about to hit the fan. So, Isaac walks out. And Joseph is criticizing him, screaming at him. You're blaming Martha for the shit that you did? Where were you when Mary died? Where were you? Isaac's like, I, I don't know, because Isaac was in Jesse's world. He has no fucking clue where he was. He can't remember. And then the scene ends with Isaac walking away. And Joseph goes, Isaac, what? It's your fault. Again. Wow. I was 
that hit me in the feels. I was like, that's cold, man. Like, wow, that is really, really cold to say. I was dumbfounded that his father would actually say something like that. Um, after this, we cut to in the music video of it. I was actually um, surprised that the music video came on, came so far, so soon. I thought it would be towards the near the end, uh, end of the episode, but that wasn't the case. Uh, in the music video, it's pretty much everyone just shooting up for battle, shooting up for the raid. We see that Jinji is a double question mark, which is crazy. We don't know what rank that is yet, but we know double question mark is the highest rank. So that's pretty, pretty good. Then... Ooh, man, Isaac walks into Arachnid's house, they get their guns, and then I love this shot right here. It's actually the thumbnail for the video of them standing outside of the house, facing it, getting ready to go into a fucking battle. It is a badass shot. I love the clothing that Isaac was wearing in this episode. Just a random thing, but I really like the jacket, the shirt, and the pants that he had going. I feel like the color scheme really matched well. But after the music video ends, basically... Arachnid is, like, kind of hinting that he's going to kill them by the end of the night. He says to Rebecca, he says, Isaac says, remember, he stays alive. Solomon stays alive. And then he said, then Arachnid says, he may stay alive, but by the end of the night, you won't be. Which is foreshadowing because Rebecca gets shot with the girl again. Whew. So... Arachnid goes one way, Jesse goes the other, Isaac goes the other, and he gets shot by Adam, who's posted up on the front. They don't realize it's each other, and then Adam goes, Isaac? Isaac gets up, and they have a little confrontation, not confrontation, but they, they talk. Isaac's like, yeah, we're raiding the place. And Adam, seeming to be really lazy, he seemed to be so, so into the game, but he's a really lazy. you think if he'd want to do really good in the game, he wouldn't just lounge back, relax, and like trying to take a nap, you know? But Isaac says, you know what? You owe me one because you fucking dressed up as my mom and all that shit. So then, after that, we cut to a scene of Arachnid trying to go through the back and Jesus catches him. And Arachnid's like, well, I was just, I just wanted to talk. And then Jesus goes, with a fucking assault rifle? And then <laughs> Arachnid goes, you need protection in this game? I was laughing that part. That was a funny moment. So, then... This shot, this part, I love this part. Basically, what happens is we see Arachnid, instead of in the house where we presume him to be, he's out in the yard and he's like, I'm gonna kill these motherfuckers by the end of the night. And he gets shot by Malachi. And he's down on the ground, Malachi's talking shit to him. I'm gonna shoot off every one of your fucking eight legs, you dirty piece of shit, motherfucker. I, I laughed at that part. But then we realize... It's not Arachnid, it's Adam doing a little fucking thing he did when he dressed up as Isaac's mom. He's portraying as Arachnid. I thought that was a brilliant, brilliant maneuver right there. Isaac comes up, pow, pow, shoots him in his chest, and <laughs> Malachi's on the ground again. Isaac's like, I'm not gonna fucking kill you. And, you know, Malachi's talking all this shit, you little pussy, you fucking bitch. And Ara Isaac does the right thing, and it's kind of funny. In the beginning of the episode, Isaac is all about no one dying. He says, no one dies tonight. And by the end of the episode, he has a psycho moment where he literally fucking demolishes Jesus. It was very, very upsetting to see. And Isaac is going down a darker, darker path now. Where do we go wrong, guys? Where do we go wrong? But Isaac, in a sense, makes Malachi quit the game. He makes him log out for good. Do I think Malachi's logged down for good? Hell the fuck no. It's Malachi. He survived season one. He's been there. Plot twist of season two. Season three. He gets vlogged out of the game. Bullshit. He's coming back, guys. He's not gone for good. His story arc is not over. We still have a lot to learn about Malachi. That's why I didn't think Arachnid would die this episode. Because Arachnid's full story arc hasn't been completed. Because the, still, the Mother Sarah thing that's still going on with him... They wouldn't just end that all of a sudden and completely end that story arc. And that needs to be completed for him to die. That's why I didn't think he would die. A lot of people asked me, do you think he's going to die? And I was like, no, his, because the story arc isn't completed. After that, we go into Solomon's lair. And wait, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I messed that up there. 
we cut we go to a scene where Rebecca is watching Gingy and I love this moment. This is a callback to uh the episode before uh Christmas Eve where Isaac has to choose between the milk and the oranges and Gingy pulls him up and he's like, such a hard decision. What do I choose? Hmm. And while he's doing this, Rebecca's spying on him and suiting up her crossbow. Then what happens is Isaac is going down into the place where Rebecca is and the moderator shows up. And Jesse, Isaac, gives the moderator a little few tips as to who's creating and giving out all these hacks. He, he, can't, he in a sense, rats on Noah. And then he says, I'm not a narc, dude. And it was, it was a funny moment, and uh, the moderator, um, Mike, looks very happy to have this information. Then what happens is something pretty uh, crazy, a very long scene that I would say. Not a long scene. This uh, After uh, Isaac goes downstairs, we cut to um, when, what, uh, oh, yeah. Arachnid goes into Solomon's office and basically backstabs the shit out of Isaac. He's basically like, Isaac came here to kill you. He's here with his fucking ho-ass girlfriend. They're here to kill you. And uh, he wants to strike up a deal. And Solomon says, no. And then Arachnid pulls a knife on him that he had been hiding in his pants the whole time. Oh, I forgot to mention, Jesus is checking. I love this part. Jesus is checking Arachnid for guns and shit. And he grabs something and he goes, the fuck's this? And Arachnid goes, it's my fucking dick. I, I burst into laughter. I was, the, the, there's had some really funny moments in this episode. Really, really good stuff here. But yeah. Oh, Solomon says, no, we're not doing the deal. And Isaac starts shooting at Gingy. They get in a huge gunfight. And then Jesus goes around to the other side. So he's blocked off from both sides or he is fucked. And he's basically like, please, God, give me something. Give me something here. And you can tell Jesse's voice is starting to go out here. This is probably the night he was sick. Um, he's, I honestly, though, I really like Isaac with that voice. I feel like it, it suits him a lot, I feel like. It's more toned down and, like, scruffy, you know what I'm saying? And then he says, please, God, give me something here. And then, what do you call it? Ready? What the fuck? So, that next scene is when Arachnid eventually pulls the gun, not the gun, the knife on Solomon. But, basically, the person who appeared was Longbags. The long-awaited tur- return of Mr. Motherfucking Longbags. Now, I never mentioned this, but in the episode where Mother Sarah is talking to Longbags... And he says, may fucking God strike me down on the hells and the lightning bolt gets him and poop. That's probably when he got transported into Jesse's world. And now this is after he snapped in the mirror to get back to Jesse's world. When Isaac was like, I don't know what's going to happen, but something, you, you, hopefully you'll be okay. And they have a very long talk about how um, Longbags is upset. His whole family's dead. Um, I do feel that it dragged on a little too far, than, a little too much than it needed to. Um, but still some really, really good stuff there. I just wish it was a little bit shorter. I feel it dragged on for a tad, but <laughs> Longbags, in a sense, goes out and gets fucking blown up. Not blown up, but Swift or Gingy just completely shreds him. We don't know if he's dead or not, but if he is, this is the first of many deaths in this episode. This one, uh, I didn't... I, I, I didn't see as a surprise, I could tell the moment he gave Isaac the gun back that, yeah, he's probably going to die here. He's going to walk out, say some powerful shit, and then, boom, he get he gets, boom, messed up. And I was like, shit, that, that happened all of a sudden. Then, after he gets, <clears throat> after he gets shot up, Isaac is like, whoa, 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 what? And I love this. This is where, when everybody was fucking talking about the one decision didn't matter, the oranges and milk decision had no effect on the story. Here's where it does. 
Isaac gets the oranges, which we voted in the original thing. He gets the oranges, and he fucking knocks Jinji out with them. He throws the oranges at him and knocks them out. I mean, <laughs> I'll take, we'll take what we can get. We'll take what we can fucking get. Um, he's making fun of him, saying, Haha, you really got knocked out, to knocked out to that shit. Then he goes upstairs, and before he goes into the office to see where Arachnid's holding Solomon to the knife, he gets pulled back. And we figure out, they're on the porch, Rebecca, Rebecca, pulls him out. And here's where I want to talk. Rebecca, what we think, is gives her, uh... Gives him, gives Isaac her address, and she whispers something in Isaac's ear. And this is where my theory, where Rebecca is not who she's playing in the real life, kind of comes to uh, truth. She says, "I just don't want you to view me differently." And then she whispers in some Isaac's ear something. I cannot make out what she's saying. If somebody can please make out what she's saying for me, I would appreciate it a lot. Let's listen here. Listen, listen, listen. We're gonna turn it up. Listen. To view me differently. I won't. I mean, what exactly are you talking about? Like, Let's skip forward a bit. She gives us the address. Isaac's like, wait, what? This is the address? He's all, he's getting moaner, all that shit. I have no clue what she says there. Is it like, let come find me? I think find me is in there. Something, something along those lines, and then literally, out of the fucking blue, I did not expect this at all, Rebecca just walks into Solomon's lair, BAM! Headshot with the fucking gold gun. What the fuck? Rebecca drops, she's assumed to be dead. What the fuck? Rebecca is dead. Is, she's dead. Now, I've seen two theories uh, that are around this. I, uh, the first theory I've seen is that it's Adam portraying as Rebecca. Honestly, it doesn't, it, this just doesn't seem, the scene with Isaac and Rebecca, it doesn't seem like Rebecca. It doesn't seem like Rebecca to me. Or the other, uh, the other option, which I feel like is a little bit more plausible, is that she used a lag switcher and she's still alive. I really do hope she's still alive. Because I really enjoyed Rebecca's character. But if she's dead, then so be it. Her character arc was semi-completed. She finally gave trust in Isaac. She admitted she liked him. Gave him the address. Her story was complete. And sadly, she got cut off after. And as soon as Rebecca gets shot, Isaac walks in. And all of the sudden, shrink! Solomon's throat is fucking cut open. Solomon is dead. Collapses on the table, dead. His last words, Isaac. And in the real world, uh, this, the, and the last, the last 10 minutes of the episode is I feel the most powerful in the whole freaking series. In this entire series, this is the most powerful. Like, this is where I legitimately, the only time I've ever cried in a McJugger Nuggets video. The past few ones, I've shed, shed tears. This, I, I cried. I, that's why, partially, I didn't record last night. I was a fucking mess. But, oh my goodness, it is so sad. And when uh, Swift, when he portrays, uh, when Jinji finds Solomon dead, and he's like, boss, 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 and you just see the dead body of the little girl, it is so upsetting. It is so fucking upsetting to see that. And... Then Jesus goes, oh my God. And he walks out the room and Isaac follows him in a fit of rage. Come back here, you motherfucker! Gets him onto the ground, punches him, punches him, punches him. He is going off. He is going off. He gets a fire poker. Boom, 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 you motherfucker. Get the fuck up. Boom. He is fucking decimating Jesus. Jesus is pleading for life. Isaac, please, please don't kill me. Please, Isaac, stop. Isaac, stop! Bam! Constantly, constantly. And at the end, he just keeps... When Jesus is even dead, he keeps going. Ah! 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 It is so upsetting to see Isaac's character take this drastic turn. And then Abraham looks at him. And Abraham looks fucking scared shitless. 
the look on Abraham's face is, oh my fucking god. Pause the video. Huh? That's the fucking face Abraham makes. And then Isaac looks at Abraham, gets his handheld mirror, clocks out. And this is the part where I cried. He gets back from Eve, and you see him take off the helmet, and he's like, no, no. And he's a mess. And he's like, a little fucking girl, no. Th Jesse, your portrayal on this part was so fucking beautiful and strong. You got me. You really got me good, man. You got me really, really good. And then you see Isaac go out to get the painkillers. He spreads them all over his desk. And he takes them. He opens his phone, sets a timer. And this beautiful music. This music, I... Let me play it. Hold on. This music... Beautiful. And I... The, 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 the next part that comes up... This part, ready? When he sets his timer, it, the music and the timing is perfect. I love this scene so much. It is so fucking powerful. I'm gonna go on and on about it. It is so powerful and strong. This moment right here, ready? This fucking music is so perfect. And Isaac just sits there. He's sitting there, crying, looking at the Bible, looking at his sister, waiting to die. I could not stop. It was so, the music picking up, him looking around, crying, a little girl, the time watch, the stopwatch, the everything's getting blurry. The, the fucking everything about this scene was so fucking strong. And then, all you see is you see the 23 minutes and 3 seconds. And then, it lays on the ground. And then you see the decision. Give up or stay alive. Whew. That was tough to get through. I voted to stay alive because, obviously, you don't want Isaac to die. But also, I feel I, it would be very, very interesting to see what would happen if he gave up. I think that would be very interesting to see. But overall, um, I didn't enjoy the episode as much as I thought I would. But the end part is what reeled it into me. It was a very slow starting episode up until the halfway point. And then after the 10 minute, the last 10 minutes of the fucking episode, that's when I think, shit, fucking, wow. That is, it was beautiful. Um, I apologize for the long video. This was a very meaty video to cover. Um, a lot of things I had to remember, go over the, this was a very hard v video to shoot. So I hope you guys can applaud me for trying to do it in all in one take. But that was the heist. We have four characters that are presumed to be dead. We have how many characters are left? How, let's count how many players are left in Eve. And we also, Jesse has stated that this is the last season of My Virtual Escape. The next season, season four, will be the last and final season of My Virtual Escape, which is really upsetting to hear, but you can tell it's coming to an end because players are getting dropping like flies. Let's see who's left. We have Isaac. We have Arachnid. We have Adam. We have possibly Malachi. We have Jinji. Jinji is the only brother left. Jinji is the only fucking brother left. Other than that, that's it. I believe... That is only five players. If you want to count the moderator, that's six. But I don't count him as a player. Isaac, Arachnid, Gingy, Adam, and, um... Why am I having a blank here? Why am I having a blank here? Isaac, Gingy, Arachnid, Adam, and possibly Malachi. There's five players left in EVE. If I'm, if I'm forgetting somebody, let me know. Very, very powerful episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this discussion video, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out, everyone. Have an awesome day.